Hello everybody and welcome back to the DCAC channel where we solve uh, technical yeah, technical programming questions in Python in this case um, so if you are here to learn Python I think this is a good uh, good place to kind of see how people would um, solve these problems in kind of like in a world in a working setting or yeah just in a technical interview setting I guess uh, let's pick a question. Uh, flood fill? 733, flood fill. An image is represented by a 2D array of integers. Each integer representing the pixel value of the image. So we can kind of see that as a grid of boxes, right? Uh, let's quickly open up a paint. So an image for us like presented in a data structure would be an array and this array will contain each pixel right so each pixel is a value in this array and ignore this this guy here he's had too much uh, alcohol i guess <laughs> so and and so forth right like this like this and all of it and each of the pixels is a cell in our array. It has a value, for example, I don't know, like one, 20, and, and so forth. And this is basically the, the value of the color it has. So I don't know, zero might be black, uh, 65,535 might, might be white, basically the two opposites. So given the, uh, a coordinate, SRSC represent representing the starting pixel so we get the row and column so starting row starting column of the flood fill a new uh, and a pixel value new color flood fill the image what would that mean uh, to perform a flood fill consider the starting pixel plus any pixels connected for directionally to the starting pixel of the same uh, for directionally to the starting pixel of the same color as the starting pixel plus any pixels connected for directionally to those pixels that are also of the same color right also with the same color yes and so on replace the color of all of the aforementioned pixels with the new color at the end return the modified image and uh, what do they want us to do in the end we are going to be implementing uh, well let's let's quickly well i don't know let's think about it we are going to be implementing an algorithm that takes a starting pixel and it has a value of something we just know the the, the position of it right we're given the position of it and we're also given uh the new color uh let's just quickly scribble it color and this would be some new value right and we want to be looking at each pixel four directionally which would mean probably this and we already had a problem that was, uh, I think, with this uh, island parameter that we handled in a similar fashion. We could implement it this way. We'll see. Um, and we will be looking if any of those, for example, this one has this value, this one has this value, this one has, uh, this would be one, and this would be five. So these two also qualify. And how do we kind of work with them? Well, we will be working with queues. And the funny part in this case is that we are doing um, was, well, it doesn't even matter if it's breath first, uh, breath first or uh, death first search. We will be searching uh, with all those elements, uh, among all those elements. And we basically will have a queue. For example, this would be starting um, coordinates starting coordinates let's say 20 20 and our value would be one for example and now 
uh, imagine this is a queue, basically a list of elements. This would be the one that we're looking at. And of course, after we looked at it, we can discard it from the queue and add anything else that we find. And for example, this one would be again 20 for the rows and 19 for the columns, all right? And again, it will have the same color. We can actually even uh, ignore the color, basically. We can just have it as a um, single value. I don't know, I'm thinking about implementing a hash map for that because it will be way easier to, um, to look up the values for each of those uh, coordinates. And yeah, and then after we are done with this one, of course for this one, we'll have to look at here, 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 right? And um, of course, if this one is already looked at, ha has been looked at, now when we are looking at this, this guy, the second one, if we see the coordinates are already, have already been checked. So um, how will we do that? We can either have this in a second queue, this would be, and this is exactly how you will implement those searches. Uh, like I said, breadth first, uh, breath, breath first search or depth first search. Uh, this one will already stay here. And um, if we see it's there, we know we, we ignore it basically because we don't want uh, it to, to return to the queue and then fill up with the same elements as before, right? This would not uh, this would not help it. This would, it would not help us. So multiple things to, to cover here actually. Uh, I would first start with just having um, just having a hash map and it will be called coordinates. It will be an empty hash map. And now we will have four uh, row in, um, how would we do this? I guess it will work like that, right? For row, well, want index, row index, row in enumerate, image and now we will be enumerating in the list in its, uh, that it contains like basically each row has a list because it's a, a uh, full row uh, now we'll say for column index cell right in enumerate the row and now we will basically say coordinates and we can say set default, uh, it doesn't matter in this case. And I will uh, say something like um, something like this, it will be basically a tuple, the first value, second value. Uh, was it that we can actually put it directly that, like that? Uh, from what I remember, we could even do something like like uh, like this. I say tuple, right? Basically, row index, column index, and then um, of course we want the cower. Um, so color, right? And this is basically just mapping what are what are all our cell colors look like. Let's just have something like okay, this is the new color. So these are the coordinates. This is the new color. What I want actually is just uh, to see how how our coordinates uh, looks like for now so we are sure that we actually get all the uh, coordinates mapped correctly and we can see zero zero 
has one, right? Uh, zero one has one, zero two has one. So all these three in this row are mapped correctly. Second row, we get a one, a one and a zero. And then we have a one, zero and one, exactly. So we have all the cases. Now, um, basically we have them mapped and now we actually want to implement our, uh, it's got it's like our two queues. One would be, I'm, I'm not sure how were they called, maybe uh, in queue, deck queue, deck. I'm not sure if that was the right uh, terminology though. Well, it's not what we're going to, what we're going to be using though. So let's have our um, our queues. So first queue uh, would be called remaining elements uh, coordinates, right? Would be an empty list, and uh, this the, the second queue would be called finished or done coordinates. All right. So. Um, what we do we want now? Um, remaining would be, of course, it would contain the very first one. This means we get image. Uh, how do we, how will we handle them? We'll handle them as tuples. So we will have uh, the row and the column as a tuple. And now we say for uh, element or yeah for element in remaining coordinates, right? Um, now we say if and now we actually want for this element. Um, we want to remove it more or less. Um, actually, we'll say while uh, remaining the length of remaining coordinates is greater than one, uh, is greater than zero. So we know we will be looping until that's done. Uh, we'll say um, remaining coordinates pop the yeah, very first one. And actually, uh, I'm not sure when, when popping, let me quickly check Python pop was it uh, able to be assigned? Return. Okay, yes, sure. So element would be this one. And of course, now we have the element. Now we actually want to see if uh, any, if we can get, yeah, basically we got the first element. Now we want to see its neighbors and we want to see if we can get, um, any new neighbors in our queue. So we say if uh, was it coordinates get and now we'll be getting um, this would be element zero, uh, zero. Yeah. And this is the very first element. Uh, basically the rows, uh, we are representing the rows right now. So we want to see, for example, the row uh, below. So this would be this plus one, right? And it will return uh, none if uh, it's, it's basically, it, it's not found. So for example, if we're here at the end, right? And we are looking at something here. It will never be mapped in our uh, in our coordinates, so we'll get none here. 
and that means uh, we will be sure not to actually uh, put it in our queue and um, this will be of course the very first one um, let's see this is get the element like this uh, of course uh, we don't want this like that right uh, we actually want for example to keep it like this and then here so this is our tuple that we're looking at like i said only shifted one one row further uh, and we see if this has the cover uh, that we are looking at and the cover that we were looking at i guess it, it just makes sense to have uh, default cover save out variable just to make sure we don't uh, lose it <laughs> and then we'll say image uh, sr sc right so we know the cover right and now default cover uh, would be the one that we're comparing at so if we see for example we look at here not the default cover okay but if you were um, let's 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 have it like that but if it were right if it were one we would basically do remaining coordinates append um, basically this um, this thingy as a coordinate and uh, we we also what we want to do is for each of those elements that we um, that we are going to be taking care of in the queue for example even for the first one we would want to say image sr sc uh well not even let's let's have it like that um, image element zero element one would be the new color that means the very first time that we take the element to uh, work with it we also change its color to the new color and we compare its neighbors to the default color so it was kind of good or fortunate that we already saved our cover here <laughs> um, and now um, we'll just quickly check yeah, it's recording so um, now that we see okay we have found a new element we can actually append it right and this is all we are going to be doing at least for now um, because we're going to be changing their cover the moment we start working with them so for now we're just appending them um, if that is the case uh, well actually we still have to check the other ones <laughs> so if coordinates get now again we have our um, tuple element 0 minus 1 which would be uh, the row above and then here element 1 none if not Again, if equal equals to the default cover, we will have remaining coordinates appending uh, this tuple, which would be element zero minus one, element one. Um, and the same thing for the one that's left and right. So basically, now I will copy it because I kind of get bored. <laughs> Uh, we will keep the rows per default we'll only increase the columns again in the output we keep the, the rows per default and this is again potential for error so actually it was never a good idea like i said multiple times before it's never a good idea to copy i'm just really kind of bored at this currently but again i'm just risking then losing time afterwards trying to debug something that's really stupid just because i didn't pay attention 
Um, again, this checks for all the neighbors. If there are any neighbors that match the color, it will add them here. After it adds them, it comes back and checks again. Are there any more elements here, right? This one has been moved. Uh, actually, still not. <laughs> still hasn't been moved. Uh, I would say I would move it right away. Uh, after we take it, I will say done coordinates. Actually, I'll do this at the very end, just to have it kind of like streamlined. Done coordinates append element, right? And that means our element has been done. It, it has been it has been used to change color of the image um, that we will be returning in the end, and uh, it has been used to check against uh, our dictionary to see if we have new new um, yeah basically new elements to work with. And at the end, like I said, it's been added to the done list. And then, and then, and then we basically go back and look again if our remaining coordinate, coordinates has more elements. If it does, it takes the very first one. It doesn't really matter. It does the same checking. If it finds uh, neighbors, it will add them again into the uh, queue for remaining ones. Um, and oh yeah. Um, what we forgot and we talked about it was now if we are checking again for coordinates that are already that have already been checked that means um, we are looking at default color for each of those neighbors for an element and also um, let's have it let's have um this thingy this tuple right when we say well, when we say it is not in done coordinates so what that means that done coordinates should be updated prior to that just so we can actually work with it let's have it why not um i would change the color right right at this moment that I pop the element I pop the element change the color append it and then I can use it to to verify that it's like that it's not being used anymore if it is part we never actually like if we see that the color is the same for example here for this element we see that uh, right to next to it next to it there is a cell that also has the same color but we see that it is in this uh, done coordinates list so it will never actually append it anymore so it will only be appended once and this is what we want uh, i will just copy this part the rest i will type and it's just a compromise you should actually type the whole thing uh, maybe there is a rule that, for example, if it's a technical thing, it's probably better to copy it and um, because you can actually get a technical thing wrong probably just as often, right? Um, so let's see. Right? Now the only thing that's left, I think, Let's quickly check our notes. Uh, something I forgot. <laughs> the length of the, the image and image zero will be in the range of in the range of uh, one to fifty. Uh, okay. So that means that the length of the image would be. So they, they mean that the dimensions can be between one and fifty in each direction. The given starting pixel will satisfy the rule that it's uh, the least would be uh, basically the, the its coordinate coordinates would be at least zero uh, and at most somewhere around the image length and again for the columns and the value um, and new color values would all be between zero and sixty five thousand five three five. Okay. So basically our constraints didn't hurt us. 
should have checked them i kind of forgot <laughs> and at the end we have already updated all those elements that we found with the new image uh, with the new color so what we can do is basically return image i'm not sure did they want this output yeah the output image and if you can see for example it's probably a bit harder so that's why we'll do something like kind of format it a bit like this uh, oops and then this now they gave us the coordinates one one right so this would be this this here and now we can see that this will turn to two right the new color was set to be two okay and neighbor up will be set to two neighbor down will be uh, left will be set to two here nothing happens but here for example this one has a neighbor this one has some basically left of two it is also a neighbor and this one also has this one as a neighbor so everything yeah besides the very last one uh, here will be changed and we have the same setup let's see if we get the same answer we have a runtime error because i spelled new cover the british way um did i do this the same thing i don't think i ever used the variable new cover anywhere else okay default cover is not defined uh, today again default cover again um, let's see uh, another typo this is done or it's I was talking the whole time while doing that it's an interesting practice actually trying to talk and call at the same time you never really think about it this way while you're programming usually <laughs> anyway um I, for now we get an accepted answer let's see what do we have when we submit and it is a success i'm happy with that uh, memory usage of course not the best just because we are actually mapping everything into uh, hash maps so on a memory footprint um kind of perspective but a memory footprint perspective we are looking at at least saving all the coordinates here again uh, that means uh, we are having some linear fashion of the same uh, size of the image so we're, basically we are duplicating the image memory wise at least at least once maybe twice depending on how much space uh, each of the tuples uh, takes but um yeah it's still we are still keeping n uh, when it times uh, when it comes to complexity um let's see we have a single variable this is runtime stuff um, again our remaining and done coordinates again can never go beyond the actual size of the image so basically again something in the worst case of less than n um we shouldn't care about it i guess i would say would that be a proper way of saying that <laughs> i i don't know i'm not sure uh but it's definitely not more than n and again this is all uh computational stuff so our space complexity i would say would be all of n uh runtime complexity we do have to go over the whole image once um, and then for each neighbor we do basically four, uh, four separate lookups and uh, we also need to pop and we also need to append and we also need to change color but they all happen in uh, more or less linear time so um, I would say runtime would be O of N again uh, with respect to the size of the image and it is something like O of six seven times N but like I said uh, you ignore scal scalars uh, basically the number before the the variable uh, in this type of analysis so yeah we should be very good when it comes to runtime and space uh, time complexity space complexity uh you can ignore that uh, like i said i've heard uh, 
these things are run on different machines uh, you can never know what kind of machine you get for memory not sure um, probably our footprint is a bit bigger because we're uh, using a, 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 a hash map but it is very useful to use a hash map because it basically gives you temporary variables for all the data and you can manipulate that you can look it up very quickly you can uh, use it to do cal cal computation on it or just save it for other stuff and it is very very useful and it also kind of guarantees you uh, you're not going to be looking at uh, some wrong for example any wrong uh, indices right because it will never be found here if you have uh, mapped it uh, properly at the beginning and that is all so i hope it was educational uh, plenty of stuff to learn here it comes like this problem comes very close to problems that you will see at interviews uh, i've seen other problems that i was just like when i was still just looking at uh, youtube interview uh, interview videos basically and people were using these things and then they looked like uh, alien technology to me but now it, i'm like that that makes so much sense and it's actually super easy uh, so of course not the very mo the very the most very the very the very the most complicated uh, algorithm or problem but it already comes close to that direction um, so yeah hope it was educational see you next time if you liked it consider subscribing to the channel and yeah bye bye